Despite their diverse backgrounds, there's a common trait among the crew members of the International Space Station's Expedition 34, a desire to fly and to explore the unknown. Retired Air Force Colonel Kevin Ford is a product of northeastern Indiana. The youngest of six kids was born in Portland, raised in Montpelier, and graduated high school in Hartford City. He was 14 when his oldest brother gave him his first ride in a small plane, and Ford was hooked on flying. I started working in a grocery store. I, I happened to, uh, to have a grocer in my town who had his own airplane, and so he was really willing to give me a job give me all the hours I needed to pay for flying lessons. Ford already had his pilot's license when he finished high school and went to Notre Dame as an Air Force ROTC student. He graduated with a Bachelor's of Science in Aerospace Engineering, did his Air Force pilot training at Columbus Air Force Base in Mississippi, and was assigned to an F-15 squadron in Germany. It was 84 to 87, so um, kind of the height of the Cold War kind of, kind of time. Never saw myself in the future flying in a Soyuz at that, at that point, I'll tell you that. Then it was a fighter interceptor squadron in Iceland while finishing his Master of Science degree in international relations from Troy State before being selected for the Air Force Test Pilot School. Ford earned a Master of Science in Aerospace Engineering at the University of Florida while flying as a test pilot at Eglin Air Force Base. And then he took a three-year assignment to complete a doctorate in astronautical engineering from the Air Force Institute of Technology. He served as an instructor at the Air Force Test Pilot School before being selected as an astronaut in 2000 and did a tour as NASA's Director of Operations in Star City, Russia, before making his first trip to the International Space Station as the pilot on a 2009 shuttle supply flight during Expedition 20. Ford is a supporter of robotic exploration beyond low Earth orbit. But I think that the human, the emotional connection comes about because uh, we, we see ourselves out there, we project ourselves out there, and, and we really want to go explore on our own, have a look with our own eyes. Russian Air Force Colonel Oleg Novitsky is from Chervin, a small town near Minsk in what is now the Republic of Belarus. Flying in space was his childhood dream. When I was a kid, I remember looking into the dark uh, sky with stars and it was like a magnet. After I grew up, I realized that it's not as easy to become a cosmonaut, so I picked the shortest route. That meant becoming a military pilot. After high school, he entered the Borisoglebs Military Pilot School. But when the military reformed itself after the fall of the Soviet Union, he moved to the Kachin Flight School and graduated with a specialization in command tactical aviation. After that, I also studied uh, to uh, work with uh, military machinery, which took about one year. And in 1995, I was assigned to work in the city of Budyonovsk, Stavropol region, where I started uh, working as a military pilot. Over the years, Novitsky was an active duty pilot and rose to become the deputy commander of a squadron based in the North Caucasus. He studied military unit management at the Yuri Gagarin Air Force Academy before serving as commander of an attack air squadron and was selected to begin cosmonaut training in 2007. He was serving as the Russian Space Agency's director of operations in Houston when he was selected for his first flight. I think throughout our entire flight uh, we accumulate experience and knowledge just like uh, athletes who train uh, to break a record. So we are preparing and uh, I hope that uh, in the uh, future we will uh, perform a long duration space flight hopefully to Mars. Russian Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Yevgeny Tarelkin is the son of a military pilot and a military doctor. He was born in Pervomeski in the Cheetah region in southeastern Siberia, but lived all over the country. In his desire to become a pilot, he made his first parachute jump at the age of 11, despite not weighing enough to make the system work. I added sand to my pockets, to my boots, and so I did come to weigh 50 kilos, so I went ahead and I jumped. Tarelkin graduated from high school in Chikalovsky, near Star City spent time at a military academy in Monino, 
graduated from the Eisk Air Force Pilot School, and then the Yuri Gagarin Military Academy, with a specialty in air transport operations and air traffic management. His first job was at the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center as a flight test engineer, training cosmonauts in survival skills and, as luck would have it, parachuting. Being that close to the cosmonauts got him thinking, I could do that. I thought I was ready, I felt prepared, I felt I had the knowledge, and I thought that maybe I'll make more contribution as part of the cosmonaut corps. After almost four years training cosmonauts, including zero-gravity training in aircraft and underwater, Tarelkin was selected to join the cosmonaut corps himself in 2003 and take on a new role in the effort to explore beyond Earth orbit. So this low Earth orbit stage is really necessary, but we need to look forward and uh, to think about uh, flying to stars, to other planets, maybe meet our alien brothers there, who knows. Canadian Space Agency astronaut Chris Hadfield was born in Sarnia, Ontario, and grew up there and on a farm in Milton near Toronto. The space race had captured his imagination by the time he was nine and watched Neil Armstrong walk on the moon. And Hadfield thought to himself, I'm going to grow up to be something. Why not that? But then when I look around, I'm thinking, I'm a nine-year-old kid and I'm a Canadian. What are my odds? Not very good. But I thought, well, you know, up until yesterday, people couldn't even go and walk on the moon, and now they can, so maybe I can too. And so I, I started getting ready that night, basically started, you know, what do I need to do next? Hadfield got into advanced courses in school and on the academic track that led to college, but he also became a ski instructor while learning how to fly as a member of Canada's Air Cadets. They teach them a bunch of technical things, they teach them self-discipline, they give them levels of responsibility that they might not get otherwise as teenagers. And in my case, I spent one summer learning to be a glider pilot and getting my glider pilot's license. And right at the age of 16, I, I became a powered pilot. Hadfield joined the Canadian Armed Forces right out of high school and earned a bachelor's in mechanical engineering from the Royal Military College. After jet training, he flew the Canadian version of the F-18 for NORAD, attended the U.S. Air Force Test Pilot School, and served as an exchange officer with the U.S. Navy at the Patuxent River Naval Air Station while earning a master's in aviation systems from the University of Tennessee. Hadfield was selected as an astronaut by the Canadian Space Agency in 1992 and assigned to the Johnson Space Center in Houston. On his first space flight, the 1995 shuttle mission that delivered a docking module to the Mir space station, he became the first Canadian to operate the shuttle's Kennet arm on orbit. After serving as chief astronaut for CSA, he made his second flight on the 2001 shuttle mission that delivered Kennet Arm 2 to the International Space Station, and he performed two spacewalks, the first ever made by a Canadian astronaut. Hadfield served as NASA's Director of Operations in Star City, Russia, retired from the Canadian Air Force as a colonel, and then served in a variety of roles within NASA's astronaut office before getting this assignment to support the research on board the International Space Station. And it is our big proving ground. It's our test track for building spaceships in the future. And it is therefore the, the diving board, the launching board, that's going to allow us to confidently go further away from Earth. Retired Russian Air Force Colonel Roman Romanenko was born in Shelkovo near Moscow and grew up in Star City at the center of the cosmonaut community. His father, cosmonaut Yuri Romanenko, flew three times before his son graduated from high school. So the idea of being a cosmonaut wasn't so romantic to the son. Whenever I went on a trip or on a picnic, a business trip, I was always w with my dad and I would just always be in contact with cosmonauts and I thought it would be always normal to be with them. There was nothing special about it for me. But he did want to be a military pilot. So after high school, Romanenko followed his father into the Air Force. He graduated from the Suvorov Military School in Leningrad and the Chernigov Higher Military School of Pilots. But after the fall of the Soviet Union, young Air Force pilots had fewer opportunities to fly fighters. Romanenko found himself co-piloting cargo transports and ferrying cosmonauts to their launch site in Kazakhstan. They weren't allowing me to fly a lot, and so I started thinking about changing jobs. 
maybe find something related to that. And right at that moment, I was told that um, they're looking for applicants to join uh, the cosmonauts. And I thought, why not? I give it a try as well. Romanenko was selected as a cosmonaut candidate in 1997 and made his first space flight in 2009, commanding the Soyuz spacecraft that brought he and two crewmates to the International Space Station to expand its crew to six for the first time on Expedition 20. Romanenko has also served as deputy commander of Russia's cosmonaut corps, while his nation has worked with its international partners to get ready for the next journey. If everything is going well, if we're able to successfully uh, follow the program, the flight program, even while orbiting Earth, with this rich experience, we'll be able to reach other planets as well with no problems. Dr. Tom Marshburn is a native of Statesville, North Carolina, the seventh of seven children who loved working and playing outdoors. He remembers being excited to watch the first moonwalk because it fed into his love of adventure. Well, I was loved to draw and to paint. Um, it was in high school that I thought, you know, the space program is interesting to me. It was specifically the space program that got me into a technical field, and I just switched completely. I concentrated on uh, math, science, and uh, fell in love with the, the physics classes. After high school in Atlanta, he earned his bachelor's in physics from Davidson College and a master's in physics from the University of Virginia. But he also came to understand that his talents might lie more in working with people. I actually came down to the Johnson Space Center and started knocking on doors, asking for a job. After I received my master's degree, uh, one of the doctors that worked here said, you ought to uh, get a medical degree because NASA's going to need a doctor someday. So I did. Marshburn earned a Doctor of Medicine at Wake Forest, trained as an emergency room physician in Toledo, Ohio, and then worked in an ER in Seattle before being accepted in the first class of NASA's Space Medicine Fellowship Program to train as a flight surgeon. In that role for NASA, Marshburn has worked in the shuttle program, in Star City, Russia, for NASA personnel assigned as part of the International Space Station program, and as lead flight surgeon for shuttle and station crews. He was selected as an astronaut in 2004 and made his first space flight on a 2009 space shuttle mission, during which he made three spacewalks to complete the construction of the Kibo Laboratory Complex and get the International Space Station in shape for its mission as a test bed that will help human beings prepare for the next stage of space exploration. You'd have to build something and then uh, test it out over a long period of time. Well, that's what the space station is. And uh, with the Russian technology, with a lot of technology the international partners have come up with, uh, we're able to find out uh, how we can maintain these things we call people for a long period of time in space.